full attendance. Uh, everyone's here except Dave, so that more than constitutes a quorum. So I'll call the meeting to order. And we'll start with the minutes that Rick sent around. Any, any comments on the minutes? Did, did you see my email? Yeah, I did. Um, and I had it, had it on my phone so I could read it. Uh, in addition, Todd had some edits that I got around everybody, so that was Rev 1. And then Tim sent along um, uh, some corrections on the Streeter Road property. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, it should be uh, eight acres, um, two parcels. Yeah, I think that's... Oh, I was wondering about eight parcels. Yeah, I think it's eight, eight, eight acres of the 40 that could easily be developed. Okay, um, and then... And it's, it, it is two parcels, not just one parcel. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'll be making that correction um, with any others that anybody has. Uh, let's see. How do I want to phrase this one? Uh, the uh, I hear a motion to accept the minutes as they will be edited. <laughs> so if that's kosher, because we don't have it in here, but that's the way I'm going to phrase it. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Tertius report, Susan? There are no changes that I know of, but just, and you shouldn't use words like this for money, approximately. Um, but we open space is approximately 250, rider is approximately 4,200, and the Preservation Hub Preservation Trust is 13,250. Is it I, up to, up to 18,000? Is that what you said? No. No. What? No. Eight. Uh, Hubbard's and Preservation Trust is thirteen thousand. Thirteen thousand. Okay. Right. Remember, it went down because the market went down because oh, it's in okay. some sort of. Okay. And I didn't bother Kelly because it's year end for fiscal year, and she's working now with Templeton, Hubbardston, and Boxborough. So I just thought, you know what? I I did. We would. I would know about some of these changes. I don't think I did see one of the fields was hay, but I'm sure he won't wait. He will wait and put it in at the end. Yeah. when he's all done so so that's where we are okay the <coughs> uh, any e old business any updates on the following destiny's garden any updates on that she has been um, collecting things and getting <laughs> stuff together she actually got her hands on a an reproduction antique to do that booth. Oh, oh wow! Neat. So yeah, she was. It was donated um, to her with from one of my other um, our co-leaders. They're like, yeah, we got something like that because they do clean outs. So they're just yeah. like, take it. Cool. Um, so yeah. So and then she's been working <laughs> on her plants on which ones to put and layouts like that. So she's in progress. Good. Hopefully we will be starting shortly July to actually start getting stuff out there and things like that. So, but yeah, so it's, it's like I said, she's been collecting that. Biggest part was the phone. We were searching for that for a while. Great. We we're hitting like Rietta and all that stuff. But yeah, luckily my co-leader managed to find one in a clean out. So I was like, <laughs> yes. So, yeah, so it'll be interesting. So, again, she's working on it, and we're getting her. Good. I went down there today, and uh, the trail, the main trail going down, is very overgrown. Who's is there anybody who takes care of that trail? Which trail? The Parsons. Through the, through the oh, fishing the dam. Parsons through, through the fishing dam property. Yeah. You mean the actual, yeah. the road part? Road? Or? Well. Well, no, I, think, I think they mow it. As soon as you get off the parking lot. Right. To the left? The first quarter mile or so is very... Really? Very heavily mm -hmm. vegetated. Yeah. I, I think they, they typically mow it once a year. Yeah. Um, Which is much. If, <laughs> yeah. I mean, if we wanted, you know, if it's seen, if it's seen more use and we wanted to uh, try and get the town to mow it, we could talk to Fish and Game. I don't imagine they would have a problem with that. Um, 
I don't know if it's a problem or not. But well, it will be. Well, it will be. I mean, if it's, you know, if you're walking through a hay field to get down there, the trail would be obscure, or getting down to you into the wood area anyway. Yeah, well, um, especially with families, with kids and ticks. And yeah, it's, uh -huh. it's past that. Uh, it's past, you know, after you, after you take the... Uh, Old road next to the stone wall, and then you pass through a small meadow field type thing with a lot of invasives in it. That's that's the section that gets overgrown. <laughs> Who owns that well. fish and wildlife? Yeah, so that's why they're not going to do much to me. Uh, uh, given the uh, uh, fishing, uh, fish and uh, wildlife, fish and game wildlife, uh, oh mantra of no maintaining trails. Uh, what would their response be to that? Well, I mean, they like I they said, do they do some work they, out there anyway. Yeah, like I said, they do mow it once a year. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I've probably not. I'll issue. talk to I'll talk to the stewardship guy. All right. And then, uh, assuming that's all right, then maybe we can talk to uh, we can talk to the town about mowing and yeah. Then. Okay. But how long is the strip that's really out of control? I don't know, three hundred yards or three or four hundred yards, I would say, quarter from the parking lot down to that clearing. Clearing mentioned. Oh, but it's not part of the trail to Destinies. It goes no, the no. other. No, no. But getting there, that's yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah. yeah. The old road. It's growing in from the old road side. Okay. Okay. All right. More than we could do with some soil and string trimmers, right? Yeah. So, too big. We need a power. Steph could go down with a brush hog. <laughs> yeah, but you're not allowed to on fishing game property, are you? No. Well, that's what. <laughs> not unless they say it's okay. <laughs> that, well, that's what Mark's going to talk to somebody about that. Got to bug him about paying my invoice anyway. Hmm. <laughs> All right, uh, kiosks. Ooh, <laughs> sign companies pissing me off. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was all supposed to ship first week of June, and since then I've been getting radio silence, uh, emails, and <laughs> voicemails. I happen to have the email address of their vice president. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's going to be my next stop. <laughs> yes. Uh, but we got the um, we got the four by fours for um, for the post for DCR. Yeah, the other day. So okay. they've got them at Dun Pond right now, and uh, after the fourth, they're going to start putting those out for the junctions. Okay. All right. Still going to want to uh, uh, stick a win and throw S holes. And yeah, you you still yeah. good to yeah. do wobble auger. Yeah, yeah. Um, What's the, you said that you have two different sizes? Yeah, uh, a six and a nine. So that's six should be good. That's the size four of the by hole. Six should be good for four by four. Yeah, they're actually three by threes, so we definitely don't want more than yeah. <laughs> more than six. No, no, that'd be a good size, because if you start hitting stuff, you get obstructions and stuff like that. No, that'd be really good for that. Okay. Um, yeah, so, <coughs> so the way, the way, I'm planning to approach this once we have <laughs> materials in hand. Um, I figured we'd put the um, put the one out at uh, Malone first. Just just dig those couple ho holes by hand, just as a shakedown uh, mm -hmm. shakedown installation. Make sure we know all the <laughs> little tricks of uh, how it's going to go in place. And then send you around one day with, okay. with the wobble auger, yep. and we'll follow after you. You know, I I think we can probably, we might be able to put all four in. Yeah. In a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I um, think so. Yeah. If That'd Bob's doing the holes, we just have to follow and drop drop them in place yep. and uh, fill the hole. Fill you know backfill with the, the concrete. Okay. Um, so that's that's what I'm thinking. Um, but uh, so so there'll be a day, so you know, 
be thinking sort of end of July, sure ish. Yeah, yeah. Um, so during during July, sometime I'll be looking for a day to do the. Um, uh, yeah, that'd to be do good. The to, yeah, do, you want to put, you want to put cement around uh, each of the posts? Yeah, you know, we just put it dry. Is that what you do? Yeah, I'm yeah, gonna yeah. drop it in dry. Yeah, the, the, the quick setting stuff dry, yeah. and yeah. Then, then you add water. Yep. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, so we get obviously that gets heavy stuff. So we can throw that somewhere on the well, on the machine. Well, we don't need to do that. I mean, those are all roadside locations. Okay. So we'll just run around with the truck. Oh, okay. Or a trailer. All right. Or whatever. Good. Um, so I'll be looking for help uh, with the blown installation and probably also when the uh, materials are delivered to DPW. Uh, someone to help me load load the stuff on the trailer and get it, get it back to my house. Sure. Great. And you uh, for that first one you're talking what end of July for that too or approximately? Well, well ho hopefully the beginning of July to retrieve it from DPW. And okay, then, and then sometime in the next, you know, sometime mid July for Malone. All right, sounds good. Um, yes, uh, Link Trail just uh, uh, there's been a couple emails on that that's uh, looking good, a little wet in one spot with, with heavy rain, but the trail is firm, so there's not an issue relative to that. So. With, uh, uh, so that's going good. Uh, any update on Hunter's project, Eagle Scout stuff? We are still waiting for council to answer and respond <coughs> on approvals. Still. Okay. So, yeah. So we're still in holding pattern on that. Tim did drop off some wood though that's sitting nicely in my garage, all tucked away for when they hopefully approve it. Okay. Uh, land priority subcommittee. Yeah, they get the five or six copies. And this will be quick. You don't have to pay uh, much attention. <laughs> you can just pass that to Todd. Uh, you want one? Uh, Katie, pass it over to Katie. Susan, There's one for Susan if she wants it. This is just a sample. The, uh, uh, we've, in short, we've been making uh, good progress. Uh, Tim put in a significant effort. So the what we're doing, uh, the status, there's two aspects of this. You get the uh, an Excel file process uh, with all the major categories and then uh, characteristics sub-characteristics of each of the major categories. And so we've uh, got that aspect of it, just the technical aspect of scoring down. The next aspect to make the meaningful, the scoring meaningful is to take each one of those characteristics and provide a description of it. And then how do you take that char uh, description and relate it to how you're going to score it? And uh, all of these, uh, you know, we talked about this the last time, you know, uh, for example, does it abut conservation land or does it abut town land? Uh, those aren't yes, no answers. There's uh, different, how much does it abut the land? Is the, is the area what uh, abuts the land accessible, usable, or those kind of things? So that's what goes into the uh, description aspect of it. And then we'll take that description and say, okay, here's some examples of how you take that description and score it. And so I've been, uh, we had a meeting uh, two nights ago to go over this, and we got uh, probably halfway through it. But I didn't bother printing that out because I want to, uh, I was doing some more editing on it today. And the, as I kept going through the editing d further and further into the document, it sort of became clear that it would be much more mm, readable, usable, if we just broke it into two sections, each of the subcategories that says, okay, his, and the one I happen to print uh, is that it has uh, ecological significance uh, uh, slash rare species, rare uh, natural species, which 
gets to Biomap 2 and uh, National Heritage Endangered Species uh, category. So there's a little definition of what that, uh, all those words mean. And then down below it is how you apply that to uh, uh, those different categories. And so uh, down under, and so e what would it, what, this is the only section that is really purely structured this way. So each one of the categories I'm going to go in and retune uh, such that it has, okay, here's a description, and then here's how you apply that. Because the way it is right now, it's sort of a merger of hints at how you score, blend it in with a description. So at the end of it, you got to keep going back into the description to th keep thinking, okay, how do I score this? And so if it's broken out, when somebody understands the basic category, subcategory, then the, uh, which is the first half, then the scoring will become much easier to read and just a refresher on, on how to use it. So, and I just showed this to, I, I just did this a short period of time ago because the other meeting we had was just uh, the other night. And, uh, Tim, who's the author of the main core of the document, thought that was a, a good way to do it, to, to keep it as simplified as and readable as possible. And a lot of these things that are in this thing uh, take some relative expertise. Uh, like this particular one that I printed out is an example of, you know, uh, getting into uh, core habitat, uh, critical natural landscape stuff, uh, the uh, natural heritage endangered species, you know, what are those things? Where do you find out about them? I mean, well, a lot of people would be at a loss relative to how to score that stuff. So what we talked a little bit at that meeting was when we take in a particular parcel, uh, like Tim is well educated in these types of things, uh, for those things that require uh, getting into specific maps like maps, uh, mass maps or some other particular uh, <coughs> mapping uh, software packages that have this kind of extensive documentation where vernal pools are, those this, uh, another category was uh, geological significance. So that gets into some relatively technical things getting into uh, eskers or kettle holes or uh, what were a couple others? Tim had a couple other things. Bedrock outcrop. Yeah, those kinds of things that are going to say, okay, these are these are things relative to that particular category that are important, and then relative to the scoring, extent of those gets into it. So that's how you get from a a zero or sometimes from a three to a five. Yeah, you might have some of those things, but there's. Uh, a very small amount of them, and they're of minimal significance, but there are those there. So, the, initially, a lot of this stuff sounded like uh, uh, either yes or no type things, and they're not yes or no type things. You can quantify them. So, that's what we've been doing. So, by the end, by the time of our next meeting, a, a goal for our little sub, for our subcommittee, a little sub, a subcommittee we need to finish up this descriptive document and then literally take uh, maybe three or four uh, maybe key parcels in town of which the group will decide to uh, pick out three or four and apply this but then bring that into the next meeting as uh, the first demonstration of how this would look and then at that point in time then we can have a, a much more uh, meaningful a meaty discussion at this session relative to okay let's go forward and Maybe start deciding what parcels we want to do as a larger group. Any comments from Rick or Tim? We don't have a big screen in here. Huh? What do you say? We don't, don't have a big screen, screen in here anymore. Oh, big screen. Big, oh, oh, big TV big screen. Oh, there it is. Oh, okay. Good. Well, well we what to put it on the screen or put we, some? We might be able to put. Um, a map or something on the screen. Oh, okay. Oh, so yeah. When we're talking about it, we can. That'd be helpful. Yeah. This, is, this is a senior center. I, I think that's a smart TV. TV. Maybe <laughs> I think that's a DVD player, not a <laughs> computer hookup. Oh come <laughs> on! Well, the screen might have a, a, a an interface of something. Yeah, <laughs> a port. 
Yeah, a HDMI USB port or a USB or HDMI. Yeah, yeah HDMI port. And it probably we must have one somewhere. But you can check on that afterwards. Too. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be a nice uh, way to, you know, if we get to that point and we have something that uh, where we get uh, some graphics would be uh, helpful in this. Uh, that'd be good. All right. Uh, that's the status of that. Uh, any other word on uh, chicken composting? I know that was a hot item the last time, but have you heard anything from Ryan recently? Yeah, not recently about that. I think it's still kind of. I'll, I had some other thoughts that I was gonna throw at him if he was still messing with it. Did you guys go to a meeting or something after? Yeah, the two of you, right? Did yeah. you? Uh, that was a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Was it would have been after our last meeting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was after it the was, last meeting. There was a was. couple of emails that went back and yeah. forth on that. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, the basic, the basic fallout was that uh, he um, he got the message that uh, Malone was not going to be a popular choice, and <laughs> after after that meeting as well, Jassy sent an official letter to, or official email, I guess, to Ryan. Saying that as the uh, as the holder of the restriction, uh, um, North County did not feel that that use would be consistent with the restriction. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that came from North County. I mean, essentially Jassy, but I mean officially yeah. from North County. Yeah. Okay. Has, has so anyone considered the idea of uh, incineration? Uh, Bob Burgard has looked into it. Um, there's, it's pretty limited uh, capacity available for that. Um, for that quantity, probably. He was, he was talking about something like, if I remember the number right, it was like they could send 75 birds a day or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it was 2,000 birds a day, if I remember correctly, no, but still, still they have 50 yeah. days. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. that doesn't, yeah. So, but uh, as far as uh, anything that we have any kind of obligation on, we have no other continuing obligation on that. So, no. oh, I'll, I'll drop that from any ongoing stuff. At the meet, go ahead. Hmm? Go ahead. I I didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, at, at the meeting that we had. write it down. I know. Katie did not say. <laughs> 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 I didn't say anything. <laughs> um, while we were having a meeting with Ryan and uh, Bob from from Country Hen, uh, several different parcels were were talked about. Uh, so by the time the meeting ended, there were other places that Ryan was going to look into, and I. I Took the uh, aerial images of some of those and sent them to him. So there was about eight, eight different parcels to look at. Um, I don't think any of them ex uh, were on town land, right? We couldn't do the couldn't do the one near the senior um, near the proposed. Location to the senior. Yeah, well, well, there. Yeah, I mean, theoretically, I, I was going to take a look at a layout on that parcel because <coughs> I think you might be able to fit it in. It's a 200 foot. You have to stay outside of 200 foot radius for yeah. a while. But um, it's possible it would work if you cleared the brush in the very back. Well, I, 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 I'm not sure where the well is. Yeah. I, th I think that's where the well is. It's the very far corner of the property, oh. but, but I'm not sure. All right, anyway. anyway um, yeah, I mean, one of the other complications was that uh, that came up in that meeting was that... Uh, I'm trying to remember exactly what it was for about, any about the money. No, about um, 
DEP solid, oh. solid waste uh, wrote it facility down. permitting. If yeah, the DEP will not allow composting anywhere except a site that already has a permit for um, infectious waste. Um, unless it's agricultural. That's that's the twist. So if, it's, yeah, if, yeah. It's, if it's in agricultural use, um, DEP uh, d doesn't interfere with uh, with composting. And I think the only spot that had that was like in Fitchburg or something. They would have to trip it. It has the permit. Yeah. 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 For like a, a, a dump site. It literally is a dump. Yep. Yeah, it's the Westminster landfill. But Westminster? They, was it Westminster? Okay. Yeah. And it's but they didn't they didn't have capacity either. It's really hard for for Ryan to to go very far with it because we're working he's working with Country Hen, but it's the Department of Agriculture that has the contractors who would actually do the the Work. composting. So and you know, they weren't at the meeting. <laughs> so there's there's other parties from the state that are state or the federal government um, <coughs> from USDA or uh, public health service that are um, that are going to be involved if it has to happen and so that that makes it harder for Bob to figure out what he can do and how he can do it. But at any rate, it's not a continuing obligation for this committee. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And Enough on uh, chickens. Let's see. <laughs> the, just to know, uh, to the uh, open space fan subcommittee will start, start doing some stuff in the middle of next month or something like that. Yeah, I, I started looking at that in the last couple of days. Um, for some reason, I was thinking that the current plan expired next summer. It actually expires in March. Um, so we're of next year? March, yeah. March of 23. Ah. That actually sounds right, given because I remember we were working on it in the winter mm -hmm. before. Um, so we're probably not actually going to hit that, but we'll come reasonably close. I mean, the only thing that matters, or the only situation when it would matter, is if we wanted to put in a grant application yep. next spring. And. We'll probably, you know, if push came to shove and we had an application that we wanted to put in, we could probably send a draft to Melissa mm -hmm. and she does her initial review and says, yeah, that's close and yep. you're eligible. <laughs> yep. okay. And now finish it up. <laughs> okay. Um, but um, use the grant I, for generating it. A grant for generating No, 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 no. No, the main purpose to having a open space plan is that you become eligible for oh, land grants. Oh, oh, oh. And, uh, relative to having it in place to submit another oh, I, trails I, I, grant or something. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because yeah, I know the last time we, Jassy got money from maybe Massachusetts, I'm not sure. There was some money that Jassy got last time and mm -hmm. uh, the, the committee had her do a lot of the generation of it as mm -hmm. well as I'm not sure what else, but there was like, I don't know, 4K or something for writing the plan. <coughs> <coughs> and where would that come from? Would that come from MRTC or something? Or? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether it would I can apply one. to an update <laughs> versus an in initial I mean, plan. We didn't, we didn't, for our last update, we didn't, uh, we didn't use any outside. Uh, maybe not. Uh, I'll check with Jassy, but. Or maybe it was for the one before. Yeah, and that, that's the one she was involved with. Mm -hmm. yeah. The last one was just us. Okay. Yeah. I, I, uh, I, I wanted to I wanted to nominate myself for project manager to put this thing together. Yeah. Um, unless somebody wants to arm wrestle me for it. <laughs> 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 any, any contenders? I, I don't think you have to worry about <laughs> Tim doesn't have any arms left. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
You might be able to handle but I'll, that. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll contact uh, Montesquieu uh, before our next meeting. Okay. And and see what see what their service offerings are and how much it costs, and yep. then we can talk about how we want to approach this thing. Yep. Um, but I'm I'm thinking that I would I would take the you know coordinate the overall project and take the technical lead on the first half of the report, mm -hmm. which is all the community information and yep. environmental inventory and conservation land inventory. And I would, I would take the lead on that, and I'd be looking for somebody else um, to take the lead on the second half of the report, which is all the public participation and setting goals and action plan, yep. and that kind of stuff. Okay. I'd be glad to lend so. a hand with that. <laughs> <laughs> But timing, timing-wise, uh, you know, I'll be able to have the first half of the report done this year, you know, by by the holidays, and then when I when I piece out on my usual spring blitz, the project will have moved on into the uh, into the public okay. participation. <coughs> yep, that somebody else can can be dealing with. And so that that was Mark, uh, Tim, and Rick were the key people on that. And so yeah, that's great taking the lead, Mark. Thanks. And those those two halves could be worked on simultaneously, concurrently. Somewhat, but you're really going to want to have the updated information available to inform the meetings that you're having with other committees and the public. Mm. So, I, I mean, a lot of this stuff, I mean, he, he, they're not strictly sequential, but it would probably be helpful to have a lot of the inventory stuff done first. <laughs> um, uh, just a side note, it relates to that, uh, just having good uh, examples, I mean, uh, the the existing one could uh, probably have quite a bit of uh, I don't know restructuring and streamlining and stuff like that and I think uh, Gardner uh, I, I went to Keystone with uh, the person that was in charge over there I forget his name but uh, I think he has since left there now but uh, yeah, they they had a exactly the, yeah. at the open space uh, meeting that was at uh, uh, Wachusa Community that. Uh, uh, the one that uh, Jeff they, what Jeff yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. he moved into their uh, economic development group yeah from from the um, yeah. conservation agent at any rate uh, the there was quite a bit of info that uh, the land trust people had on that and his was uh, the, the one from Gardner was a, a good model yeah. and I'm sure you got some good models there's some yeah I looked at I looked at Westminster has a new one um, um, Athol has a new one. Good. <coughs> All right. That's good. Uh, that's what I got for old business, new business. A uh, couple things for some relative to email traffic, uh, paying at Mount Jeff, and then uh, driving on Malone Road. So, paying at Mount Jeff, I don't know. Tim, and anybody <laughs> got comments on that? Yep. I met with Lane yesterday and um, he he was not aware that there was a restriction on mowing field number two that's the one right, right next to Joe Cataldo's house um, and so that made me wonder if, if I was mistaken about that Is anybody else no that's correct that's correct Okay. I think it was maybe a, an update in the most uh, recent <coughs> one which we did a year or okay. so ago All right. it used yeah. to be just the big field across the street. Yeah. But then, uh, well, I don't know, a little more education on what's considered uh, the birds don't recognize <laughs> this road down the middle. Yeah. And so oh. <laughs> they, the birds look at it as one big field. So yeah. even though parcel-wise, the, the one on the west side of the road, uh, west or north, whatever it is, the, uh, 
uh, that's a smaller acreage below what is normally considered something that you want to uh, uh, affect your haying policies or whatnot, mm. but the birds don't look at that's it that right. way. So we, that's why we modify yeah, it. The bottom line is that they do they do nest there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it, according to the textbook, they will have already fledged. Um, I didn't see any young birds flying around the t times I've walked up there, but I might have missed them. Um, but he was. Uh, he was agreeable to, uh, in the future, in, including that field with the other the ones on the yep. east side of the road. Um, and uh, uh, those are the only two that we put a restriction on, right? If I recall, yeah. Yeah, it's the on the east side. It's the way the fields are numbered. There's two different numbers, but it's it's kind of one field. Yeah. Uh, I guess there's a parcel line that divides them. Um, he, he said um, he's having a tough time uh, financially, particularly because, I mean, with the second cutting, he said the yield is much lower. That's partly because he has to wait until <coughs> July to do the cutting in those fields, and partly because of just his own limitations. You know, he's a, he's a small mostly one person operation um, and he's got some young people that are helping him but they don't know how to drive the truck with a standard transmission and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's got another guy that helps him a lot but he's got a full time job so he can't help him until after 4 o'clock in the afternoon um, so uh, he said he'd, he'd like to, to attend one of our meetings um, just to have a conversation with us about see if any of us can drive the tractor. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, what's he paying? What's that? Was he? Yeah. I, well, I didn't quite get that far. Um, I can ask him next time. And uh, he also mentioned that he's planning to leave a box trailer in that uh, field near uh, Joe Cataldo's house. To store the hay and, and just for a few days. I mean, until yeah, it gets he did that last year, that yeah. but we didn't know about it ahead of time, so it was a little bit. We're, what's that? So well, it's nice that he mentioned yeah. that. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. So he's just letting us know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, what about inviting them for the next meeting, July twenty-seven? Would that make yeah, sense? Yeah. Yeah. So you go ahead and invite them. Okay. Yeah. In fact, the, the next meeting, or even the one after, just find out when he's available. If he can come to the next meeting, that would be very appropriate. Okay. We are doing the last Wednesday, right? What? Last Wednesday yeah. of the month would be the 27th, I believe, but let's double well, check it. Susan's already all over that. Well, yeah, I was checking on the way down. <laughs> Any other uh, comments on haying? It's been a glorious June. I would think this would be a wonderful hay season, or is it too dry now? No, oh, dry. Right. no it's been a, it's people, been a people that do two cut-ins. They they did their first cut-in back at the beginning of June. Yeah, that's what I mean. I um, and just it, uh, it has been rip, rip. it has been wet and it has been a little di bit difficult. Really? But the the people that are uh, <laughs> yeah no because I know a lot of guy, even guys over in Hardwick are just uh, not getting all their fields cut. Really? Well, they need they need four or five days in a row. To mm -hmm. get the stuff in, and there haven't been two or four too many <coughs> up until recently. There haven't been too many four or five day stretches, and I know, like you know, I, I'm tuned into that. I know I'm uh, trying to talk to Ray relative to getting him to cut his thing, <laughs> and he's missed a couple windows, and so now mm -hmm. he's cutting straw. Mm -hmm. But yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the, a lot of the hay is way past. Where you would ideally like to to cut the you get your first cutting in, yeah. Um, but a number of the the number of the people that I know uh, relative to hay, because uh, we did get some from uh, Prouty. Prouty's over yeah. there. Yeah, he's and when we got our first big bales over there, he had only cut five percent of his fields. So yeah, that he was started three cutting weeks the second ago. week in June. Yeah. What's that? He started cutting the second week in June. Yeah, some. But when I talked to him, and that was uh, late June, 
or late no late May. Uh, you know, he said he only had five percent of his hay, his fields cut. So, Lance, um, did, Lance did cut the other field on the west side of the road yesterday. Oh, the big long field. Yeah, yeah fall off field. Yep. And he well, was, the kids told yeah. me that today. If he had time, he was going to start on the east side at the north end. Huh. I yep. don't know whether he got that. Or not. But it just right. seems compared to last year, which was so, so wet, was it? It just yeah. was not a good year for hay. So this year has got, is going to be better at least. Yeah, it, it is definitely going to yeah. be a better year, absolutely. And it is the 27th. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> and the last thing is driving at Mahone Road. <coughs> and uh, the, uh, so Susan had some input. Tim went over and moved a rock or something. And How'd you do that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just, I just attached the power pole to one of the other rocks and uh, made sure that the rock I attached the power pole to was bigger than bigger. the rock I was trying to move. <laughs> 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 Good thing. So maybe you've done that before. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So I didn't move it very far because I wasn't sure how much width we wanted, but it it now the the rock uh extends at least part way into the wheel track of where the vehicle drove through. And, Susan, and the vehicle, were you Su according at to Susan, the vehicle scraped as it was. So. Yeah, I, I didn't see any paint transfer on the rock. Well, there was a good, it was, yeah. They, yeah. Were you yelling, waving to them? Like, <laughs> yeah. No, I wanted to be low key. Like, I just, because you never know with people, yeah. you know? And, <laughs> and like I said, they, they look like miscreants, if you know what I mean. So I didn't. I want to hide my identity. No. Um, <laughs> Didn't you comment on that uh, vehicle being seen somewhere Yeah, else? there was um, a black sedan seen on the people that own the, uh, the camping campground. What's that? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's Peaceful Lakers, Acres. You mean? Yeah, she had somebody um, Just hunting on her property, and it was a, a black sedan. Oh, that's Lakers. what the She story. got the plates, and they, oh. the police were involved, but they never found the people because the plates were it was Nets, a, it, yeah. well, it's a uh, now I'll embellish on your story because you didn't tell it all yet. <laughs> the, the the people were down at Peaceful Acres, out into the field, probably down at the yeah. end of the road there, where it turns into a dead end. And they were actually shooting at turkeys or something, yeah. right? Just yeah. she went running out, <laughs> and she's really? one that has guns, so she would shoot them. She <laughs> <went out>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're not supposed to be out here, and they said, she said they. You know, just kind of ignored her and told her this this property doesn't belong to anyone. But her cows, <laughs> her cows were running away from it and got caught up in the fencing, so you know it damaged some of her uh, her animals. Oh, her beef geez. cows. That was a story I heard. Huh. But there was another black sedan. Isn't that interesting? These guys didn't look like they had energy to do anything. <laughs> no, because he had no, si not a cigarette hanging out of his mouth, but something. You know. They just looked sleazy. <laughs> yeah, but what were All they right. gonna do then? If I hadn't been there, they just would have sat in the parking lot and smoked. What? What did they? What did they do when they went around the field out there? Did they just? Oh well, they went through, and at that point, that caught my attention. Before they had just they'd come in, and I was sort of just doing my own thing, and then I saw them go through, and then down, and I and I was just about finished up, and I thought I don't really want to get involved with the, this crew, but then they obviously had turned around. And then it came back out. Yeah, they followed. They followed the mowed path about yeah. halfway down the field. Right. And then oh, did you cut, see where they cut to the right across and yeah. looped around the through the hayfield? Yeah. And cut cut through the middle of the field and back around. Nowhere else for them to go, right? <laughs> well, they could have at well, least done. You know, not did they yeah. do? He hates that now too, doesn't he, mm -hmm. Mr. Lane? So anyway, it's just uncomfortable. But I mean, you said there was a total of five minutes that they. Were yeah, it was just they basically drove in. And then drove through and drove out. Yeah. But it wasn't. It wasn't major damage. It's just a no. Mind. But <laughs> well, maybe yeah. they were looking for some more turkeys. <laughs> <laughs> How did you flower? Oh, How are they looking? Uh, <laughs> compared to, <laughs> and I want to give a, a wonderful compliment to Deb Holly. They are doing some. They, you and your wife, are doing some wonderful natural landscaping with lupin early spring. And the is it what's now Coriopsis? Coriopsis. And then um, Cosmos. and oh okay. And then because I hadn't been up there for a while last summer, and all of a sudden I was driving back, and oh, it was just like this. And now it's just beautiful color, and it's mostly just takes care of itself. It's wonderful. 
So um, where is that? <laughs> News to you. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that is how. <laughs> that is how. Well, it's, oh. it's early, you know. It, after it's been there for five years. It'll do its own it, magic. It's yeah. going to start looking more like the area of Malone Road because well, grass and uh, goldenrod and clover are going to infiltrate mm -hmm. the area. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so over at Malone, we do have Monarda, the red Monarda, Rudbeckia, Black Eyed Susans, and finally the Echinacea, the coneflower, is taking hold because it's the third year for some of them. But you do have to help them along, and when it's dry for more than a day, I have to go over with jugs of water. There's a well on that property, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Does anybody see a connection? Water well. I'm just wondering. <laughs> You'd have to put in a, a pipe. A pump. Yeah. The old fashioned kind. Right? Yeah. Seriously, could you do it? You could. <laughs> subject to vandalism. Oh, yeah. yeah okay. Well, a uh, pitcher pump wouldn't be uh, too much subject to vandalism, would it? Uh, pitcher. What's no, a pitcher pump? A, yeah, well, oh, they one of the kind of I managed got vandalized. Yeah. Maybe you could see if North County would put one in. <laughs> well, no, I'll stick to my milk bottles and stuff. <laughs> it's all right. It's Because it's usually nature does its thing. And, oh, and one last comment that doesn't have to do with pollinators, but has to do with snakes. What kind of snakes oh, yeah. did he say he saw? Rich, the farmer there in Williamsville? Yeah, so I was, I bought some strawberries from him. We were chatting, talking gardening and stuff. and. I don't know how we got on the subject, but he said that uh, he he's had um, a few rattlesnakes uh, visit him and and camping out in his in his foundation in the rocks in his foundation. Oh. Said, is yeah, right there in Williamsville. Yeah. Is that unusual or is it me? It's a totally. Uh, that's pretty unusual, I think. I Wait, isn't there something New England? Mark's, oh, Mark's about to say something. Well, there's a bunch over by Quabbin. Yeah. Oh. Did yeah, they yeah, just put him on an island there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but those are timber. He said these were timber rattlers. Seriously? That's the only kind we have. Yeah. I mean, it is possible. But if you don't really know what you're looking at, uh, a milk snake looks somewhat mm. similar. Yeah. <laughs> milk snake or puffed adder. Both of them will shake their tail. And if there's dry leaves around, they can make a sound that looks a lot like a rattlesnake. It sounds a lot like a rattlesnake. Yeah. Mm. OK, then I won't be alarmed. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Sounds good. Uh, so it's taking care of his molds, though. Yeah. Oh. He does a great job with his vegetables. Well, uh, the milk snake and the probably the puff dad would do that too. Yeah. Um, all right. Oh, one last thing. I would like to say a gigantic thank you to our chair, Mr. Robert Hatch, for coming to the habitat ceremony last Friday and offering um, the little coupon. And as far as that, you know, when I will be contacting them with contact information once they get settled and just send it out and anybody who wants to come fine, if not, Rick and I will take, get, take them on the, on the uh, tour of at least Malone, we'll see. But it was very nice. A lot of the community got involved. The Council on Aging. Do you want to know what the coupon was, Susan? Pardon? Do you want to mention what the coupon was? Oh, I, thought I sent a picture to everybody, didn't I? So you didn't see it? Okay. It's the coupon for a, a guided hike on Mount Malone and Mount Jeff. Yeah, it looked nice. Good job yeah. with that. It was the same that was on the banner that we used in the parade. So Rick oh. just whipped it out. He's so good oh, with that good sort of stuff. That. Oh, yeah, that, that's right. <laughs> and just, it was banner. just a lovely, the wheel. <laughs> a lovely uh, community gathering. Yeah, the, uh, uh, anybody that, I uh, think Rick was there, Susan was there, you know. Mr. Todd, Todd the, was uh, there, of the, course. Uh, it was uh, it was quite a it was a big deal. The, yeah. There were probably thirty cars that arrived, mm. and maybe what fifty people or something yeah. like oh, that. Yeah. There were a lot oh, of people. Katie and who was the other select there, person that was there? Uh, Jeff, Jeff Williams. Jeff Williams. Was Jeff there. Williams was also there. So, but that yeah. was extremely <laughs> well done. A lot of well uh, words and a nice welcome, and there was a tour of the house, and so it was extremely well done. Yep. So it was. Very, nice, very nice positive. Little, yep, and this was the first one in Hubbardston mm -hmm. that they've uh, had. And, yeah, no, just but 39th in this area regionally. How, how close is it? 
to be, to be infinite? How close is it to be infinite? It was the paint. Some of the paint was still wet, <laughs> but it's it's habitable. They're it's moving done. on the thirtieth. Yeah, they're moving in tomorrow. Moving in. Yeah, yeah they I must be so excited. It passed by a couple of weeks ago. It looked like it still had. <laughs> Quite a bit Various to do. stuff to do. Yeah. Hell yes. Yeah, the, uh, a lot of outside stuff to do. Landscaping. Yeah. Is. yeah the, it's, the, a, it's new, it's new. Not, <laughs> no yeah. landscaping yet. The plants were sitting over there. I could see some. Oh, of them. were they? Yeah. I didn't notice. Them. <laughs> but it has a neat floor plan because you walk in and it has a uh, cathedral ceiling, which surprises you and makes a very small space seem bigger. I think it's what you need: a kitchen, um, laundry, you know, and two full baths. Yep. And this, you know, three nice. bedrooms. Wow. Yep. So nice. it's very nice. Simple but nice. Yep. Uh, so, any other? Yeah, just um, we started to talk about it out, um, out front here before the meeting, but um, uh, whether or not we, we're going to need to have more maps printed. Um, Mark just handed me about 100. I have about 50. Um, we inherited those. Susan and I inherited those from Jassy four or five years ago. Right. There's a box that probably had, uh, printing was probably about 2,000 of them initially. Mm -hmm. So that 2,000 has lasted five years. So the question that Mark posed was, you know, if we're going to have the uh, kiosks and the uh, way, waypoint signs and everything on the trails, do we really need to print more maps? So, um, that I, I mean, we fairly frequently replace them. We don't put a whole lot of them in there because they get wet or whatever, but um, but it's still, you know, we probably, I don't know, a couple hundred a year, would you say? I should be doing it more regularly, but I forget. <laughs> well, Mark's putting some in too, so. Yeah, I mean, So are you guys thinking that we don't need more or that we do? I, Not yet, but should we be thinking about it? Yeah. And what kind of changes? I think. That was financed by advertising, it looks like, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's a whole nother enchilada. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm, if we do decide to print some, I'm not all that interested in going that route. No. <laughs> I mean, it's no. maybe a thousand bucks or something in printing. Right. <laughs> we've, got, we've got money for that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, but what we were my, my, my issue is, I mean, I'd, they don't go down very quickly, that's for sure. Um, there aren't that many people taking them. Actually, and especially now actually we find and if, and if people we actually find them empty a lot. That's at, I Mount, mean, at Mount Jeff. Yeah, and and Malone. No, more Malone. Yeah, more Malone, but yeah. Mm. Mm. But we go. I mean, every time we're over there, we you know drop ten, twenty of them in there. Uh, okay. So I must come after after you stock each <laughs> time. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't do as much in the winter, um, obviously, but. Anyway, just putting it out there. We let's let's wait and see what the signs. But the are big like. the big signs all have the QR code on them for people to load the map onto their phone if they get reception there. <laughs> That's how to do that. Well, I, I, I guess. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Bob, yeah. you, my two comments. Maybe let's just see. We have some. Uh, let's wait and see what the situation is after we get the uh, the kiosk up and stuff like that. And uh, so at each of the major entry points, there'll be something that's going to be able to, people can see what the situation is. Is that right? So if they enter at uh, Old Cross, they'll uh, see something. And, and then <laughs> yeah, Malone, Old Cross, um, Muzzy Ridge, Coppers Mine, and Red Oak. Yeah, so at oh, each of the major I'll, entry points. I'll have the big sign. Yeah, there'll be something that shows them what it is. There'll be the fact that they can get it onto the phone, and I guess for local people, you, you know, maybe uh, even advertised somehow at the kiosk area, but those signs are all put up to let people know they can download it. But uh, from the website, right? But that's what you can do from the kiosk. Right, you just take a picture of the little square thing. Yeah. And then you get the map. Is that right? Right. No, Are my you point so was you, you so can go onto your point. <laughs> my point was at the I town website you can download the map. Oh, on the town website. Yeah. Yeah. That, well, that too. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. I think we should just wait and see if we, if we want to print them or not. So. Yeah. 
that's that's a good point. You can see how how it works with the signs and the chaos. But if we weren't going to use advertising to pay for it, that would free up some space on the paper, right? That's true. So that would be an opportunity to put more information about open space. Um, well, that's yeah. Like that. I mean, that's yeah. another. Well, actually, I guess I guess that. Was it a side, a half a side? I guess that applies regardless of whether you're going to steer people to an online version or a paper version. Well, we, we could. We that's could. right. Online, we could have more information yeah. with the maps. I mean, we typically, if we know somebody's new in town, we, we drop off maps to them. some of the people in Templeton. We give them maps to just when we run into people over there with their horses or bikes yeah. or something like that. We yeah. Maybe we should, well, all the horse people in town already know it, though. Yeah, right? but there's people so. from out of town we've given maps yeah. to. I mean, that's, we've got plenty to do that kind of thing right now. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think we need to, it's not a pressing issue, but no, just something not. to be thinking about. No, yeah. Yeah. all right. Yeah. And just one last thing. <laughs> Go, Susan. It's, this was Rick's idea. I'm going to give him the credit and get him in trouble. Um, the ARPA money. Do we know what the status is on that? Is there still some available? Yes. I'm putting you on the spot. I didn't do that intentionally, but if we really wanted to do a an ADA trail, this might be the time to tap the ARPA funds for mm. it. That was Rick's idea. What's the application date? Do you know offhand? Um, they had a meeting, the ARPA committee, I believe, last night to start the process of getting the new version of the applications together. I haven't watched the meeting. It's on YouTube now. Okay. Um, so you can watch it to see if okay. they got it together or not and what they said. It's about, I think it was like an hour or something like that. So, but they yeah, have I, I was talking to Christopher Monroe Tuesday. and he happened yeah. to mention that. I mean, because if it's the first, there. <laughs> the first round, time, you know, anybody that asked for money, applied for money, got it and for just about anything because they didn't they didn't have that many applications and he's hoping so he's been going around to other committees and letting them know so it just you know um, we went to the business meeting for the historical society and they were thinking about applying and then they said well philosophically the pandemic didn't hurt them and so philosophically they didn't feel that they should be asking for money as a result of that um, but so the you know the question is were we hurt by no but we a no. lot of people used our open spaces during the pandemic yeah, yeah the, usage, the usage rates definitely ticked off yeah. yeah. the people that really needed it maybe they just dis saved and so stage. I'm wondering whether you know that's that's sure. a valid reason if we needed something done at any of the any of the areas whether it be Malone or Mount Jeff or you know that's a great. Well, relative Lane well, or any of the other places. Relative to trying to make something, uh, quote unquote, uh, ADA, which ADA doesn't define what you need to do on trails. It's a, it's a, another analogous one. Okay, uh, uh, help me here uh, then. I always. I mean, because what we. At any rate, the uh, Malone is the one that is the closest to. Right. Uh, relative to all the different aspects, uh, obstructions that are uh, ex uh, exceed an inch in height, uh, and grade, and, and so forth, and, yeah. pitch and stuff. And, and for the, and blind, the pitches, we haven't accommodated certain that amounts over certain distances. So you can have a slightly uh, uh, high pitch, but even a slightly high pitch isn't very steep. And but as long as you don't have that level of pitch for more than you know 20 feet or oh, something. Oh yeah, it's very like specific. I know. Well, that's why we didn't really hassle with it before, and, and materials and so forth. Well, it would be expensive. I mean, there'd be grading that would need to be done. And, uh, and I think it would be. I think if we do the kind of base that we're talking about, and you put that down, and you just put a little more stone down, and then you put a firmer, a material on top of it, you can make a firm. Yeah, but you have without to, without it excavation, be, uh, it has to be graded to get that. Uh, I don't know. I researched it for the open base plan, and uh, it was quite extensive. The requirements for an ADA. I think you could put down a a, a trail that would be close to uh, ADA compliant without any kind of excavation. Well, is it something we want to tackle though, too? Because yeah. we've got the sign thing going on imminently, right? This <laughs> next month. 
So just in the back well, of your I, mind, I, maybe I'll just... Is yeah, there any other work that we need to... Otherwise, I'd love to get Williamsville Chapel updated. How about that? <laughs> okay, forget that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Anything else? Any other new business? And the next meeting, Susan, was what? The 27th of July. And we have a guest coming, hopefully. If not, though, August would be an alternative mm -hmm. then, the last Wednesday. How about All right. That? And we welcome Blue to the Burnshire Hills. <laughs> He's been very good tonight. Yeah. Uh, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.